Prince of Darkness. Help me bring Kay to the dark side. Bring her to the book. Have her learn our ways. Learn from the book. Learn from the book. Learn from the book. The book. Tabitha, is that you? Find the book. Learn from the book. Read the spell that will take Miguel away from charity and make him yours, yours, yours. How long is this Hocus Pocus stuff going to take, Princess? The cemetery gets Timmy the Wally. And being destroyed doesn't? Because that's what's going to happen if, if charity and Miguel consummate their love. Don't talk dirty like that, Tabby. Jimmy hates it. <laughs> Charity is pure. And Kay is going to make sure that she stays that way. All she has to do is find the right spell in the book. <sighs> Beware. The dark one knows thee for his kind. T'will ride thee as a large black cat. That's weird. With a silly old book. I'm wasting time up here. I should be downstairs. She's waking down and charity up. Time to get to work. Everyone stay away from the Book of Evil. To go near it would destroy us all. What Book of Evil? Charity, don't worry. All right, remember what Father Lonigan said? That at evil can be fought once we figure out who brought it to harmony. We all know who that was. What's that supposed to mean, Reese? Well, who casts evil spells? Witches. Who's the only witch we know? Tabitha. You know what, Reese? I wish you would lay off of this this Tabitha witch thing. Hey? I mean, you sound like a broken record. Don't believe me. Fine. One of these days, you're going to realize that I knew what I was talking about. I just hope when you do realize it, we're all still alive. He'll be here. I didn't say anything. You know, Sam wants to go on this trip as much as I do. Chris, I know you're looking forward to this trip. I just, I just don't want you to be disappointed. I mean, it's just, it's just too bad that he, that he had to go to the hospital. Well, you know, he couldn't ignore Pilar's call. I mean, she said that Ethan, his son, could be in trouble and needed him. You know, maybe he just got confused about what time the train was leaving. Grace, you told him the time. I mean, he's a cop. I mean, it's his job to remember that sort of thing. Yeah, I did tell him. If I was going away with you on our second honeymoon, I wouldn't forget the time. <laughs> but then, I mean, who really knows what's keeping Sam? I mean, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's Ethan. Or maybe it's Ivy. Laura, I have to take off. Grace is waiting for me at the station now. I can't miss that train. I understand, Sam. And... I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I'm warning you. You may be called back to arrest your son. You don't really believe Ethan's capable of killing someone. I wish I didn't. But I'm afraid that before this night is out, 
Ethan may commit murder. Ethan. How's Ivy? Any, any improvement? Uh, she's still unconscious, but uh, the doctors say she may come out of it. Oh, Ethan, you've been through so much lately. Our mother's been through more. Well, if there's anything I can do, any anything at all, you, you know where I am. Thanks, Gwen. Well, I, I want you to know that I'm here for you too, Ethan. Rebecca, what are you talking about? You, you despise my mother. Well, see why he has to be so snippy. Mother. Oh my, you brought your gun to the hospital? Why would you do that? Well, it's to remind Julian that he and I have wedding plans. <sighs> if they were to see this fax, it would destroy his life. <sighs> Please, Mrs. Crane, just let it go. <gasps> Never! If you were to read this fax, he would kill Julian and spend the rest of his life in jail. Drastic situations demand drastic measures, Harper. Don't do this, Julian. It's insane. No, it's brilliant. I get rid of all of my problems with one simple flick. Teresa, would you come here a moment? I want you to do something. since the last time you checked. Yeah, I, I, I'm just... I'm worrying too much, I know. Sam's a punctual guy. He, he'll make it. In the meantime, why don't, I, why don't I get you a cup of coffee? Yeah, that'd be nice, thanks. <laughs> Ivy has done everything that she possibly can to try to get her way back into Sam's life, and he does not want her around. You sure of that? Yes, I am sure of it. Ivy is Sam's past. That's it. Okay. You sound doubtful. Look, it's just that I've heard that... that they say no one ever really gets over the first love. I've never got over mine. Yeah, Sam said the same thing, so what of it? Well, I... I just wonder if it's not true for Sam. If Sam has ever gotten over his first love. Ivy. Ivy! Listen to me. You are a wonderful, beautiful woman that any man would be lucky to, to fall in love with and have a life with. Any man but you. That's because you didn't come back. I waited. I hoped and prayed that you would, but you didn't. I had to move on. But I have never stopped loving you, Ivy. Not for a minute. Come on, Sam. It's so important that you and I get away, just the two of us. Don't miss this train. Let me get this straight. You're telling me Ethan, my son, Ivy's son, is going to commit murder? Yes. Tonight? I'm afraid so. What? What? I mean, did you talk to Ethan? I mean, did he tell you he was going to kill someone? It wasn't what he said, Sam. It... Pilar, now I know you've been going through some tough times lately. I mean, Teresa's wedding not happening. 
Luis losing Sheridan. Sam, that has nothing to do with Look, this. all I'm saying is you're probably to the point where you're worrying about everything. It's all exaggerated in your mind. I'm not exaggerating this, Sam. If a certain something happens tonight, Ethan could commit murder. <sighs> Pilar, you're, you're talking in riddles. What do you mean, certain something? I wish I could tell you more, Sam, but I, I just promised that I wouldn't talk about what I know. Pilar, how can I help you if you don't tell me what's going on? Look, Sam, if this were to get out, a lot of people would be hurt, and it could lead to murder. Pilar, I insist you tell me what's going on and let me decide what to do with the information. I'm sorry, but there's nothing more I can no. say to you. How do you figure I can stop the murder? Maybe you can't. Maybe nobody can. Look, I gotta go. But I'm not gonna leave until I talk to Ethan and get to the bottom of this. What do you want now, Mr. Crane? You want to get the facts out of Ivy's hand as badly as I do, right? Well, you know I do. I have tried to get it, but she won't let go. Oh, those talons of hers. Mr. Crane, that fax is a copy of our marriage license. If Ethan were to read it, find out that you and I are married, he would walk out of my life for good. You see, Ivy made him promise that if he ever found out that I lied to him again, he would break up with me. But worse than that, he would kill you, Julian, and spend the rest of his life in jail. A very bleak outlook indeed. Well, I can't get that fax out of her hand. Not to worry. I will show you how to get the fax without her knowing it. How? Simple. Use this. What? <gasps> what are you saying? Burn the fax while she's still holding it in her hand? I would never ask you to do that. All you need to do is just flick on the lighter and just, just hold it close to her hand. She'll feel the heat, let go of the fax, you grab it, burn it, run off with Ethan, and all our problems are solved. <sighs> evil ever comes to harmony again. We'll destroy it before it even has a chance to get a foothold. We'll find out who brought the evil and expose it. This is our pledge. And no one can break it. It's a pact that'll last forever. I wonder where Kay is. Yeah, she'd want to be a part of this pact. What is it, Charity? Are you having another premonition? The Book of Evil, Miguel. I see a monster coming out of it. What kind of monster? It, it looks like a jungle cat. It has yellowy eyes. I can't get it out of my mind. I've admitted him to I haven't a clue where this premonition came from. I didn't call for a monster. Who could have set it loose? Monsters make Timmy very nervous. Well, I'll be... Look at that! Oh no! It's a friend of Bobby's! It's Kay! Kay isn't enough trouble when she's being herself. Take this lighter, and all our problems will be solved. You'd like that, wouldn't you, dear? Of course you would. Oh, well, yes, uh, but... Uh, Take it. No. No, I can't do it. Even though Ivy is out to destroy me, it's not in me to harm her. Damn Teresa and her conscience. Misguided youth. Find a way to 
Get that fax out of Ivy's hand before someone sees it. What? Oh, Father. <laughs> Don't let this be your Waterloo, Julian. It's imperative that Teresa sign the annulment papers. Well, what good are the papers if Ivy shows Ethan the facts of our marriage license? Get rid of Ivy. You won't have to worry about the facts. I've tried, Father. Lord knows I've tried, but Teresa refuses to help. There you go whining again. If there's one thing I can't stand... I'm really bringing you up to date. ...on your pathetic attempts to rectify the situation. Well, here's what you have to do. Get rid of Ivy and marry Rebecca. No, no. No, wait, wait, wait. The best of all possible worlds would be you getting rid of all three, Ivy, Teresa, and Rebecca. You think that hasn't occurred to me? Then do it. Do whatever it takes. Because if you don't, believe me, sonny boy, you're out of the family. So what is it? Mother hasn't gotten worse, has she? Oh, no, no. She, she's the same, Ethan. She's unconscious. I'm just worried that she hasn't improved. Look, Teresa, I know you and Mother had a long conversation back at the mansion. But I know you two work things out. Mrs. Crane, please don't tell Ethan. I didn't do it on purpose. I am sorry that I lied, but I never meant to hurt him. I had so much champagne that I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Save it for someone who cares, Tots. Please, Mrs. Crane, don't tell Ethan I will do anything. I'm all out of pity, Teresa. I'm just glad I found out in time. I can't let you do this to me. I won't let you do this! What do you think you're doing? I won't let you take Ethan away from me. I am not gonna let you do it. And now you and Mother can forget about that promise I made to her that, that I would leave you if you ever lied to me? Because that's never gonna happen. into a panther. Is that the monster that you saw in your premonition? Yes. What do we do? I have to get out of here. We've got to go after it. All right? Find out who's responsible for it being here in the first place. <gasps> Where's Kay? Oh, she must be upstairs. Kay! Maybe she saw whatever that thing was and took off the back way. I hope so. But we're gonna find this thing, all right? Root out the evil and make sure it never comes back to Harmony again. Come on. Come on. What's Timmy and Tubby do now? We find Kay before they do. If we don't... They might figure out that we're responsible for turning her into a monster. And then our goose will be cooked, Timmy. Thanks. You look worried, Grace. 
You don't think that Sam's gonna make it, do you? He'll be here. He's a man of his word. <clears throat> you know, you gave up a lot to take this trip with Sam. I mean, you gave up a chance for me to fill in the blanks in your past before I leave? Well, you know, you can write it all down in those notebooks they gave you and mail it to me. Yeah, but what I mean is you, you, uh... It took a lot of courage for you to do what you did. I just hope Sam doesn't let you down again. No, he won't do that. Never. Forgive me for being the one to remind you, but... Sam has already let you down before. By not telling you about Ivy. I just hope this doesn't end up being another one of those letdowns. Teresa, you shouldn't worry so much. My mother is going to wake up, and when she does, she's going to give us our blessing. Right. Teresa. Hi, Chief Bennett. Uh, would you mind giving us a moment alone or something I need to discuss with him? Oh, of course. Thanks. I love you. I love you, too. How's your mom? Well, the doctors say she's gonna be fine. That's great. I guess it could have been a lot worse, but she's very strong. Yeah, yes, yeah, she is. Is there anything else on your mind? Anything you're worried about? No. I I guess, uh, well, I guess I'm worried about, uh, you know, getting, getting everything in order so we can set our date for the wedding. So there's nothing you're upset about? You're not angry at anyone? Well, uh, you know, uh, Julian has been totally infuriating in all this, uh, but what's new? And uh, I guess I'm, I still tend to get angry with myself, you know, remembering how blinded I was not seeing Julian for who he was, what he represented, when I thought he was my father. Yeah, but we're all blinded at times. You just try not to make the same mistake again. Amen to that. Ethan, uh, look, can I be blunt with you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> this is really gonna sound crazy, but uh, you're not intending to kill anyone, are you? Kill anyone? Why would I do that? Let me be frank, Julia. I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way, my dove. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it. That's why I have ordered the crane jet to be fueled and ready for our flight to Vegas. A flight? Yes. So either you marry me tonight, or I shoot you. Are we clear? Oh, oh, and when Sam asks me why I did it, I'll tell him about my gruesome discovery. That you killed your sister and I had to, to shoot you to stop you from running away. Oh, my God. Hmm. So what's it going to be, Pookie? Leave for Vegas or leave your life? Can I see it? Yeah, I think it was I just... can't let anyone see me this way. Sense the presence of evil, Miguel. You know, well, that thing doesn't know who it's messing with. Hey, remember, don't do anything to the monster until we know who sent it. Check. We're gonna root out evil in harmony for good. And then you'll see I'm right. When you grab that thing and make it talk, the first words out of his mouth is gonna be Tabitha Lynx. You're nuts, Race. Come on, guys. Royal pain in the derriere, isn't he, lad? One of these days he'll get his mark, my word. Forget Reef. Did Tabby hear what Miguel said? He's gonna root out all evil in harmony. That means Tabitha. <laughs> no kidding. So what are Jimmy and Tabby gonna do? Oh, one thing. 
place for sure, lad. We better find Kay before Miguel does, or we must just keep running. I thought it'd be better if we talked alone, away from everyone, especially Julian. The farther away from him, the better. What the hell is he doing here, anyway? I don't know. I mean, everything that happened with my mother, her crawling down the stairs happened in his house. You know, he probably just wants to make sure she doesn't sue him for all her pain and suffering. You know, there's not a decent bone in that man's body. Look, let's just forget about Julian. Now, what's this business about me killing someone? What's this all about? I don't know. It's crazy, right? Well, what might make you think that that might be true? Well, it's not me. It was Pilar. She's got it in her head that something might make you so angry that you'd commit murder. Pilar said that? Yes. Well, did she say who I might kill? Well, that's the strangest part. She refuses to say who. That doesn't make sense. That's a bizarre accusation to make, that's for sure. I, ha I have absolutely no reason to hurt anyone. Look, if it was anybody else but Pilar, I'd dismiss it. I know how much she cares for you. She wouldn't just call me over here and tell me this if, it, if she didn't have some basis. Yeah, it's strange. Don't worry about it, all right? After talking to you, I'm relieved. It's obvious that you're not going to do whatever it is she thinks you might do. Look, I feel a whole lot better, not only as chief of police, but uh, as your father. Well, thanks for your concern. It means a lot to me. <sighs> Look, I gotta take off. Yeah. Take care. If someone hurt Teresa, then I'd want to kill him. Rebecca, sweetheart, light of my life, I, I can't just zoom off to Vegas. Can and will. But Ivy is... Oh, if you I... mention that bitch's name one more time, I swear I'm going to plug you in the kneecap. Re please, just hear me out. The woman is on her deathbed, or close to it. Well, one can only hope. Well, how would it look if I were to run off and get married now? It would generate an absolute maelstrom of bad press, and you know how father hates bad press. He would never forgive me, and rightly so. Mm, I don't think Alistair's the one you need to be worried about right now, my pet. Think about what you're doing, Mrs. Hotchkiss. Mother, I need to talk to you. What, now I'm in the middle of something. Now. <sighs> Bad to worse to abysmal. I don't think I can take much more. Well, I'll tell you, Julian, lately I've been thinking I'm Tony Soprano's lawyer. That man hasn't half the problems that I have. Mr. Green, it is please. time for you to come to your senses. You have to go in there and get that fax from Ivy. By burning her? No, it's not right. Why are you so worried about Ivy? I mean, what's a little burn compared to what will happen if Ethan spots that fax? Have you forgotten what Ivy did to you? If she hadn't driven her car into that church, you two lovebirds would be married and settled down by now. So what's it going to be, Teresa? Just a little singe for a life without Ethan. Oh, how? Did you burn your hand? No, I'm, I'm fine. I just don't know what's wrong with me. You just know yourself tonight, Grace. You're just... You're just worried that Sam might not make it. You know what? I'm not worried. Sam will be here. I told you this trip is as important to him as it is to me. Lord. I was just on my way to see Ivy. She's still unconscious, but Ethan says the doctors think that she'll pull through. Oh, thank God. Laura, I'm gonna take off, but I wanna let you know not to worry. I had a long talk with Ethan. Oh. And believe me, killing someone is a, the furthest thing away from his mind right now. I may not know my son all that well because I haven't spent that much time with him, but I do know him well enough that he's never shown any signs of being a murderer. None of us are murderers, Sam. But we're all capable of snapping if we're pushed to the limit. Laura, what is it? What is it that's going to make Ethan snap?
Mother, you can't just threaten to shoot Julian. Yes, I can. And I'll tell you why. Look, I know you think it was unseemly the way I was acting in there and the way I was talking to Julian. And you're right. Under normal circumstances, you are absolutely right. But these are extraordinary times, and that calls for extraordinary acts. I mean, my whole future is in Julian's hands. I divorced your father for him. I have put my entire life on hold for him. And I'm not just going to let him turn around and walk out of my life just because it's unseemly to threaten him when his ex-wife is unconscious in a hospital bed. I mean, given the opportunity, Julian will wiggle his way out of anything, and I have no intention of giving him that opportunity. Okay, I understand that, Mother. Really, I do. And, and yes, I dragged you out here because I thought you were behaving poorly. Under normal circumstances. But what I really want to do is talk to you about Ethan and Teresa. I think you're right. There's something really strange going on between them, between uh, uh, Ivy and Teresa and Ethan. I don't know what it is, but I think it might be big. I can feel it. I've been watching her from across the room, and uh, she's so nervous. I mean, more so than usual. I'm getting this sense that, however slight, I may be able to get Ethan back. This may be my last chance, and, and I don't, I don't want to ruin it. Oh, I am so happy to see you haven't lost your fighting spirit. I want Ethan. Then you go get him. Okay? <laughs> and you just let him know at every opportunity that you are there for him, just like you did when you ran into him. And when the opportunity arises, strike. <sighs> but now, it's my time. And I am not leaving here without Julian in tow. Just flick on the lighter and give her a tiny little burn. It's nothing. All you want is for her to drop the bloody facts. It's simple. I mean, she's probably so pumped full of painkillers, she won't even feel it. Think twice about what you're doing, Julian. I've thought twice, thrice, a dozen times. The second Teresa flicks that lighter on, the flame will ignite the oxygen. There'll be an explosion. I know. It's crazy. If there was a better way to go about this, I would jump at it. But there isn't. Not with Ivy about to wake up, Ethan on the prowl, Sam Bennett in attendance. Father breathing down my neck, Rebecca ready to riddle me with bullets. There is no other option. Time is running out, Teresa. What's it going to be? Oh, you've put in a terrible position, no, Mr. You wait Brent. a minute. You put yourself in this position just as much as I did. What's done is done. Are you going to burn the facts and marry Ethan? Yes or no? I don't like it, but I will do it. Escape. Hurry up, Timmy. Timmy feels sorry for Kay. Although he wouldn't mind using her the night to scare Fluffy and teaching her a lesson. If those kids find Kay before we do, we're in for a lesson we'll never forget. Come on. I can't let Miguel find me. I can't let him see me like this. to hide. But where? Maybe behind these crates. Hopefully no one will see me here. Oh no! I think they're coming this way! We've got it trapped. Miguel, I'm scared. I'm feeling a really strong sense of, of threat from the monster towards us. 
we all know what that threat really is. Tabitha. She's the one we're really after. He's still not here. Train on platform two, now boarding. Well, that's your train. I guess it's crunch time. Soon you know who's more important. Ethan, Ivy, or you. I think he'll make it. I know he will, he's got to. I'm sorry, Sam, I've said too much already. Laura, why won't you help me? If you're so certain that Ethan's gonna commit murder, then... Well, I just, I still have hopes that it won't happen. Well, I'll take the odds on it not happening, too. But, Pilar, look, we're running out of time. You gotta help me. Look, I have to go meet Grace right now. Come on. Look, I am certain Ethan is not gonna hurt anybody. But Grace will be badly hurt if I don't show up. Now you know Grace is my life. My future. 